people are really competitive there is just so much content fake it till you make it and that is just completely false it is honestly amazing welcome back to my channel so today's video is a very very important one for any medical students or future medical students out there I went to medical school with such a strange perception of what it was going to be like a lot of the things I thought were completely wrong and I want you to learn from my mistakes and these are my 10 top things I wish someone had told me before I started medical school so if you do like the sound of today's video then please remember to give it a big thumbs up and also if you are a medical student then let me know whether you agree with what I'm saying or whether you have any other things that you wish someone had told you before medical school I would love to to hear what you think in the comments and also if you are new then welcome my name is Anna and here on this channel we just have a little bit of something for everyone from medicine uni lifestyle and I would love if you decided to stick around and subscribe so my first tip would have saved an awful lot of stress an awful lot of worry and that is that the content actually isn't that hard now I was panicking so much that I wasn't going to be clever enough that I was too dumb for medical school but actually the content isn't as hard as you think now that that doesn't mean that I agree with the phrase medical school is easier than A levels that you might hear some medical students talk about because of the sheer amount of volume. There is a lot of volume, but the actual content isn't as hard as you would think. The next one is that medical school is very competitive. Now, I was hoping that once the competitive nature of getting a place at medical school was over and we were all there, medical students might be less competitive. I was very wrong. This competitive environment only gets worse at medical school because you have the very top students all competing against each other you are literally ranked in deciles to see who is doing best in your cohort and unfortunately this can manifest into some very quite nasty behaviors such as lying about how much work you've done hiding your notes from other people, looking down on people when they get the answers wrong in class. It can be a bit overwhelming to start with. And as someone who actually really enjoys working in groups, sharing notes, I wouldn't say I'm very competitive in academics at all. I see it as whatever decile you're in, you're still gonna be a doctor at the end of the day. It is something that you get used to. And if you just ignore those people that do wanna be really competitive, not let it phase you and find people that are more like you and want to work together, then you're gonna be absolutely fine number three is you're gonna have to get used to not being at the top of your class and equally it's absolutely fine to not be the top of your cohort in medical school you are going to be compared against people that were all top of their class and unless you are a genius that is just not realistic when you get to medical school and equally if you don't want to be in the very top decile that is fine as well at the end of the day no matter what decile you finish in you're still going to get your title as a doctor it can be really easy to compare yourselves to people that see to be doing amazing and getting much higher grades and equally your grade percentage is probably going to drop quite a lot if you're used to getting full marks in exams and always getting every single question right that just isn't going to happen at medical school i kind of learned this at a levels especially with biology where an a star was literally something like 68 percent but it never feels very nice taking the exam knowing that you only need to get just over 50 percent to pass because you don't feel like you've done it very well and that is the case with medical school exams and also that was kind of how I felt for a lot of first year that I wasn't doing very well and I actually ended up really high in my cohort which I was so pleased about but for me I didn't feel like I was getting everything right and it wasn't something that I was used to so you just need to learn to focus more on your learning and yourself and not comparing yourself to the rest of your cohort number four is that you're probably going to have to change your learning style and revision techniques now what worked in A levels is most likely not going to work in medical school because like I said there is just so much content also this passive note taking that most six forms seem to encourage you to do actually isn't one of the best techniques i'm going to link two videos of ali abdal's about active recall and space repetition and these are my two most important tips for medical school and getting those top grades not passively writing notes now it might take some time to get used to what exactly is going to work best for you for me that is writing flashcards and i don't bother writing lecture notes that in six form would have terrified young Anna who literally had the prettiest notes in the entire world I used to then condense them but if you do this for 
every single lecture of medical school. It's going to take you so long and it's also just not an efficient way of learning or using your time. And if it takes you a little bit of time, that is absolutely fine. You're not going to find your perfect technique. Think about what is working for you, what isn't working for you. Try something new and don't be afraid of changing your learning techniques. Number five is that you're not going to get on with all of the lectures or the lecturers. Now, I found this really hard at the beginning of first year and I was just determined to keep watching the same lecture over and over again until I understood the topic. But I very quickly found that this doesn't help your understanding at all and you just waste a lot of time. A bit like sixth form, there were some teachers that you loved, some teachers that you didn't get on with and their learning techniques just didn't suit you. This is going to be exactly the same with lectures and where YouTube is your best friend. Now, some of you might be thinking that watching a YouTube video is a cop-out's way or a bit easier. No, stop. It is honestly amazing. Lecturers are fantastic and some of them are top researchers in their field. They are complete experts, but that doesn't always equate to them being the best teachers. And some of them I personally find really hard to understand their lectures, which is when I jumped to YouTube. And there are some amazing YouTubers who teach medicine so simply. I always like to use the learning technique that if you can't teach a topic to a five-year-old or a good friend, then you don't understand it properly. And YouTube for me is really good at picking up the basics, the big picture. You need to find a different learning resource that suits your learning style. And for me, that tends to be YouTube. Number six links in really well with that. And that is you don't need to know every single detail in the lecturers. Like I said, they are experts. They know all the details, but that doesn't mean that they expect you to know that. You have to remember, you are only a medical student. There are so many different concepts and things that you need to know that you are not expected to know these finite details. It's so much more important to understand the bigger picture, the mechanisms, the concepts, and then be able to apply this knowledge to different scenarios. It's really easy to fall into the trap of just memorizing things at medical school because there is so much to memorize. And I always think A-levels is a bit more of a memory game. Whereas medicine is so much more about understanding concepts at the end of the day you need to be able to use this to apply it to patients in different scenarios that is not memorizing something you're never going to see exactly the same situation twice with different patients that is why medical schools aren't looking at to test your memory they're looking to test how much you get these concepts the minute you get your head around that you're going to save yourself so much time and just be able to work so much more efficiently if you don't worry about these tiny details in every lecture and focus more on the bigger picture number seven is that unfortunately you're going to have to prepare yourself that at some point you're probably going to struggle with imposter syndrome. Now, I heard everyone speak about this before medical school, but I don't think I really understood what it was. And it's kind of just not believing that you're meant to be there or not believing that you're achieving what you're believing or needing good grades to actually feel worthy of being there. And I think I struggled with this a little bit in sixth form as well, but I just never think I'm doing very well. And then I always take an exam and it proves me wrong, but I kind of need those grades to feel worthy to be there. And I had this exact same feeling at medical school. Because you're being compared to the very, very top, everyone's gonna have to need three A's. And think about it, that really isn't that high percentage of students in the UK. You're then trying to do well against everyone that is already very intelligent. And it can be really hard sometimes to have confidence in yourself. But a new phrase that I'm going with is fake it till you make it. I've used this in so many aspects of my life, but it's so true with academia as well. Just have confidence in yourself. And if you don't think you have confidence in yourself, then just tell yourself that you can. I'm a firm believer in affirmations and the law of attraction. And just say to yourself, I am clever. I am worthy of being here. I am a good medical student. Saying this to yourself each morning can honestly make a huge difference on your mindset and can really help battle with imposter syndrome. They make it so hard to get in and so many loops to jump, but that, trust me, if you weren't good enough to be there, you wouldn't be there. So you need to start believing in yourself. Number eight is not seeing the importance of balancing medical school and also having a good time at university. Because you have so much content to get through and probably a lot more lectures and a lot more work than a lot of other courses, it can be really easy just to fall into the trap of just working, working, working and missing out on socials or having fun and enjoying the whole university experience. Medical school is meant to be the fun, easy bit before you get 
all of the responsibilities of becoming a doctor. So this is your time to just really enjoy everything university has to offer. There are so many things to go and do and get involved in from societies, going out with your friends, starting new hobbies, sports, charity work. It is so important to build your resume, but also grow as a person. That is what university is for. And you're gonna miss out on so much of it if you just focus on your work. Now, the next one is so important and that is please don't be too tough on yourself if you're finding medical school hard or finding the change hard or not doing 100% straight away. It really is such a huge transition. And in my first term of medical school, I was really hard on myself about not having my revision technique sorted, not working out exactly how I wanted to take my flashcards or my lecture notes, not feeling like I really was on the top of my game. But no one when they first change to medical school is gonna be the very best medical student straight away. It really is just gonna take time to work out what works best for you. Medical school is five years and it's a learning process and it just all takes time and the last one is that your life is literally not over when you become a medical school student I don't know why but I got in my head that you have no time once you get to medical school you're not gonna be able to enjoy different things and that is just completely false a lot of it is all about time management and using your time wisely and prioritizing different things at different times you also get at least two really long summers to go and travel, see friends and family, start different things. And medical school on a whole, it really is so fun and such an exciting time with loads of time to join different societies, go out, see your friends. Outside of exam season, medical students really can balance everything. If you get used to organizing and time management, you're going to absolutely love being a medical student. It is so fun and really not as scary as so many people make out. So those are all 10 of the things that I wish I knew before starting medical school. I really hope you found it helpful. If you did, then please remember to give it a big thumbs up and please remember not to worry. Yes, there are parts of medical school that can be really challenging and hard, but equally there are so many amazing things about being a medical student and you really are going to have the best time. Anyway, I will see you all so soon in my next video everyone. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye!